Ele do Mare Father, let your word come as dew tonight. Let it rest upon every thirsty heart. And let it change our lives for better. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. All right, give God a shout of praise and please you may be seated. Amen. Please let's sit down. God bless you. I celebrate my beautiful wife who has accompanied, accompanied me to this missionary journey. Hallelujah. Daddy has said I will pray another dowry. I will pray about it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please, my mother-in-law is here. Let's celebrate my mother-in-law. <laughs> Mommy, God bless you. All right. So my teaching is going to be very simple. Because when elders are around, your teaching cannot be too deep. But it's going to be very simple. And I believe that in the simplicity of these words, um, it, will, it will reach deep into our heart. So I'm teaching on the race. The race. The race. Somebody say the race. You can do better. Say with me, the race. the race. All right. So there are three um, subheadings I'm going to touch on. Number one will be number one will be preparing to run. Number one will be preparing to run. Three subheadings I will touch on. Number one will be preparing to run. And number two, because we have elders, I will not I will not rush it, but I'll be a bit fast because I'm time conscious. Number two will be running the race. Number one will be preparing to run. Number two will be running the race. And number three will be finishing the race. Of course, I've not finished the race, but it's according to what scripture teaches. So number one, let's start preparing to run. Preparing to run. Preparing to run. First Corinthians chapter nine. Preparing to run. First Corinthians chapter nine. Verse 24 to 27. Preparing to run. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24 to 27. If it can be projected, I appreciate it. I read from here. New Living Translation. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it, okay, to win a prize. King James will say to win an incorruptible crown. Please give me the last verse, verse 26. Okay, and every man that striveth for mastery is temperate in all things, and he does it so that he may win or obtain a, an incorruptible crown. All right, that's for the world. We, we, we pursue an incorruptible crown, but the world pursues a corruptible crown. Verse 26. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beateth the air. Verse 27. But I keep my body under and bring it to subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. So number one, we're starting with preparing to run. Please say with me, preparing to run. Now, there is nothing great that can be achieved in life without proper preparation. Life has been described by scripture to be like a race. There are many metaphors that Paul the Apostle and other writers of scripture have used to describe certain things and situations and even life. And here, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth and then he says, that he that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Because without preparation, listen, a man can be born without preparation, but a man cannot survive without preparation. When a baby is in the womb of the mother, the baby did not prepare to come because the baby is in a womb. But when the baby is born, you begin to realize 
that if the baby does not learn what we call survival instincts, the baby is not going to thrive. Is that true? Now, when we say the race, preparing for the race, we are saying that there is a destiny that God has placed ahead of us. We are saying that there is an assignment of God for our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. We are saying that there is an assignment of God for our lives. And the beautiful thing about life is that life gives everybody a chance to prepare. Because if life does not give everyone a chance to prepare, that means that God will not be just. Because some will be able to complain when they get to heaven that God was unfair. I could not prepare, but the other people could prepare. But everybody born of a woman has the opportunity to prepare for the race of life. Are we together? Not everybody running a race is safe to follow. When you want to run a race, I used to run 100 meters back then in secondary school, and they would say, on your mark, get set, go. What you will notice, even if you watch sports, is that not everybody running is actually running to win. Hallelujah. In fact, the referees and the men that hold the cameras, do you know they are also running? Amen. Oh. The men that hold the camera, do you know they also run along with those that are running? Now, if you're an athlete and you see that man running, are you going to run after the cameraman? Why? Because speed is one thing. Destination is another thing. There is a difference between momentum and direction. Sometimes we young people want to pursue certain things and they are beautiful. But if it is not within the plan of God for our lives, we will burn fuel only to realize at the end of the journey that it was just selfish ambition. So, not everybody running can be imitated. Why? Because not everybody running is planning to get a baton. Some people are running for selfies. Hallelujah. You know, I remember when the NSAS protest was very on. I don't know if it happened in the background here. There's what they called NSAS protest there. There were people that came down from bike, and the only thing they came to do in the NSAS, uh, sorry, in the NSAS prayer walk, you know, there was one prayer walk that people began to do. And people came down from bike, took picture with the crowd that were praying, and climbed the back and went back home. Now, when they post it online, you would say they interceded for Nigeria. No, they came to snap and post. They didn't intercede. I'm saying that there is a way young people can run in destiny, but your mentors and your models do not really have a destination in mind. And so he says, Paul is writing here, he says, listen, there is something about a man that strives for mastery. He says he is temperate. The word temperate means he is careful. He pays attention to details. In fact, research has it that those who run the Olympics, they prepare at least three years before the race. So you can't wake up tomorrow morning and say, brethren, I just had a vision from the Lord Jehovah. And he said, Larry, it's time to run the Olympics. And then the next morning, I wear my boots. I say, I'm running this Olympics. What I say, what I call. Listen, some things don't answer to prayer points. Some things answer to direction. There are certain things that will not happen just because you pray. They will happen because God has said, and you are in the right path. If you have been blessed, amen. Blessed are those who are confident for... God will help them. When you sit before elders, it becomes... Now, he says here, I, I wrote something here. I said, movement and direction are not the same. For example, in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12, the Bible says, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. So that means that a man can determine in his heart what looks right, but that it looks right does not make it right. And that's why the first aspect of preparation for the race of destiny that I want us to consider briefly is spiritual preparation. Please say with me, spiritual preparation. Ah, spiritual preparation. The Bible says, the writer of Hebrews, he says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manner spoke unto our fathers by the prophet. He says he has in this last day spoken to us by his son, who being the brightness of God's glory, the express image of his person, by whom he made the world, upholding all things by the word of his power. And it said something very powerful about Jesus. He said in John 1 that in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. By Him. Thank you. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life. But this life is not just life. It was 
the light of men. That means that in the kingdom of God, the life of God gives you direction. Hallelujah. He says the light was converted to the light of men. The light shineth in the darkness, and the darkness could not what comprehend it. You see, the spiritual always superimposes over the physical. The realm of the spirit is superior to the realm of the flesh. Any time, any day, when people, spiritual men, want to change things, they don't really consult the realm of the flesh. They first go to the realm of the spirit. He says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That there is a throne that can help you to obtain something. Listen, a throne and a tree are not the same thing. When you talk about a throne, what you see behind it is authority. God does not rule from a sofa. He rules from a throne. And so when we want to receive from God, we must contact the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and then receive grace to help in time of need. No man can win the race of life without grace. This is why this is the house of grace. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Another thing I want us to note very quickly is that you will not be rewarded for finishing another man's race. He that striveth for the mastery must pay attention to the fact that you are missing. Tell your neighbor, run your race. There are too many people in Christianity today, that is our mommies, who are commentators about other people's ministries. Commentators about other people's work with God. Commentators about other people's churches. But the Lord in their eyes, they've never considered it. So, listen, and nobody wins award by being a referee in the football match. You win by participating in the game and scoring goals. Is that true? I'm not a footballer. Is that true? I, I believe it should be true. <laughs> you don't win cup. I've never seen a referee carry cup and say, we won the cup. No. The assignment of the referee is not to score goals. It's to be observing people. I'm saying there are many people today in the race of destiny. They look as though they are running. But if they are observing, they are not running. When you watch who's, who's a bolt or a little clip today, some of these men that run, once they start running, you really see them looking around. Ah! Look at what this person did. Hey, look at this person's clothes. Why? Because distraction is the enemy of advancement. We must avoid distractions. And these are part of the spiritual preparations. That must happen to us. So I was talking about the realm of the spirit. He says, so that the things which were which appear were made from the things that do not appear. Because the visible is a child of the invisible. For example, when Jesus was to come to the face of the earth in Luke chapter 1, the angel met Mary and said, Hey, Mary, breast are you among women? And then he began to say, You will bring forth a son, you will call his name Emmanuel, and you will save his people from their sins. And Mary said, how shall these things be? Seeing that I do not know a man. It does not mean she does not know a man. It means she has not had sexual you know, relationship, intercourse with Joseph. And the angel said something very powerful. He says, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. Then you will be able to conceive. Meaning, listen, there are things you desire to accomplish. Until there is a brooding of the spirit, nothing will happen. Am I talking to somebody here? There are things that we have, in fact, it is possible for God to tell us what he wants to do. But without the backing of the Spirit, it cannot be done. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 to 7, he says, Say unto Zerubbabel, not by power, nor by might, but by my Spirit, say the Lord. Tell your neighbor, not by power. Say, not by might, but by my Spirit. Do you know that as a human being, there are some things you can do. In fact, as a non-Christian, there are things human beings can do that are not Christians. But the advantage of the Christian is that we have a supernatural edge in God. Listen, an unbeliever actually can also tap into a supernatural edge that is actually diabolic. Hallelujah. Is that true? Have you seen people that will literally consult abalists and abalists will give them charm and the charm will work? Have you seen charms that work before? Oh, okay. They don't use charm in the battle. Ah, okay. Well, I've seen charms that can work. But I'm saying that there is a God that can suspend both the charm man, the charm, the spirit behind the charm. Why? Colossians tells us that he's the head of all principalities and powers. Without spiritual preparation, everything else you do in the realm of the physical, it will be frustration. So people are frustrated every day. They tried visa, it did not work. They tried to build, it did not work. They tried scholarship, it did not work. Can you go back to the realm of the spirit? Because that's where the source is. When you want to stop a problem, you don't go to the step, you go to the roots. 
It starts from the realm of the spirit. Spiritual preparation for the race. Our elders will say it is what the bed needs. Uh, I don't really buy it. Uh, that we used to pay for. <laughs> that we used to fly. I want to ask you, young people, especially the young ones here, what have you eaten? What do you carry? Are you like a tanker that is empty, that runs everywhere, enters every portal, but there is no substance on the inside? Do you know that in life, everything you carry has the potential to multiply, whether good or bad? So if you invest in your spiritual growth, it's going to translate into greater dividends later. It's the law of compound interest. Tell your neighbor, feed your spirit man. Talking about spiritual preparation. You are created for the glory of God, no doubt. Genesis 1, 26. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, let them have dominion. But you know that as a result of the fall, things are no more the way they should be. And so for you to be able to take advantage of God's, you know, power in this race of life, then you must first go back to the realm of the spirit. You must first check your heart to see whether you even have a work with God at all. Because there are a lot of people that love Christian songs but are not living the Christian life. There are a lot of people that sing Christian songs but do not have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. There are people that can talk about Jesus but they don't know Jesus. If Jesus were to appear to them, they will run away. Why? Not just because of the excellent brightness of his light, but because his lifestyle seems to contradict theirs. I'm saying there are people today, even who may be playing instruments, and they can get to heaven today, and they say, okay, enter. If they stay in heaven for 10 minutes, they will run out. Why? Heaven is not conducive for the flesh. It's only those that have the life of God now that can enter later. If I would say amen. Ah, your amen is not strong. If I would say amen. For example, in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation. Do we have people like that here? A royal priesthood. I don't know if we have people like that here. A holy nation, a peculiar, someone tell me, a peculiar person. Wow. Called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That means that as you run the race of life, your advantage is your connection to the realm of the spirit. Because the realm of the spirit, the partnership with the Holy Spirit, it will give you light and understanding. Daniel was confused and he prayed. And the angel said, I have come to give you skill and understanding. Why? Your spiritual understanding guides your life. Your possibilities are limited by your exposure to spiritual things based on scripture. Take another point quickly. Aye. Without a relationship with God, the race of life is a burden. Hi, It's a burden. It's a burden. Without a relationship with God, your maker, the race of life is a burden. There are people today, for example, in theology, that there, are, there are a group of people they call atheists. Atheists are people who don't believe in the existence of God. So they will tell you God does not exist. But you see, in the book of Romans chapter 1, Paul made it clear that it's not that they don't believe that God does not exist. They are living in denial of the existence of God. Why? Because even the visible things of creation, the butterfly, the sun, the moon, the star, the creation testifies that there is an intelligent designer behind it. So that means that although there are people who don't believe in the existence of God, and yet some of them are still succeeding in what they choose. How much more you who believe in God and have God in you. And the Bible says, Hear of God, little children, and have overcome them. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. He says, This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our connection to God puts us on an advantage position. Please say to your neighbor, You are never disadvantaged. Say, You are never disadvantaged. <laughs> In Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32, the Bible makes it clear. Daniel 11, 32, spiritual preparation. He says, those that do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God, they will be strong, one. And number two, mommy, they will do exploits. That means that in the race of life, exploit is a product of strength. And strength is a product of knowledge. So your knowledge of God brings strength, and then strength, because it's exploit. Only God knows how many people are trying to build LinkedIn without foundation. Is it possible to... I know that he knows about building. Can, can you build LinkedIn without foundation? 
But there are people that that's their prayer point. Oh God, lead their level, lead their level. And God is saying, but there's no foundation yet. Anything you build by the flesh must crumble by the flesh because, because it is only by the power of God that things are sustained. Your marriage will not just be sustained by going to seminars only. You need to have a working knowledge of God. Not just what they said, but what you have found out in scripture. That why Christian does not mean things will work well. Nothing just works by mistake. Nothing just happens. You must be intentional before you can win in any aspect of the race of life. There are people that are 500 years, okay, not 500 years. There are people that are 50 years in church. And what they know about Jesus is not more than what their 11 year old boy knows about Jesus according to Sunday school. That means that they remain in church, but they are not growing in Christ. So they will be victims of all kinds of strange prophetic moves in quotes that God is not their source. I mean, we are in a generation where you have spent 45 years in church, you should be able to discern between a true prophet and a false prophet. It should be basic things that you learn in Christianity. But you'll be finding out today that sometimes even pastors of churches are not sure who is a true prophet or not. Why? Because when the knowledge of God is not available, the people of God will languish in darkness. Spiritual preparation. If you don't know God, other things will distract you. Take another point, please. Now, when it comes to spiritual preparation, I'll just give you two important things. Two important things. The ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. It is simple, but it is very true. The ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer. When we talk about the ministry of the word, we are not only talking about Bible reading. We are not only talking about memory verse. We are talking about sitting with scripture, finding out what God has said, and then aligning your life to what the word has said. Listen, if God has not said it, you should not expect it. Hey, you didn't catch it. If God has not said it, you should not expect it. But it's possible for God not to say it, and it happens to a person. Who sees a thing and it comes to us when the Lord has not commanded it? So, what do we do when we notice things that God has not said in our race? We, we don't need to be troubled. We just go back to the God that when He speaks, His word is law. It overrules every other thing that any other person has said. Hallelujah. You are living here victorious in the name of Jesus. So, the ministry of the word, for example, in Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2. He says, the spirit entered into me when he spoke to me. You see, the ministry of the word gives you strength for life's battles. The ministry of the word gives you strength even when your physical strength has abated. How many of us here have waited on the Lord? Okay, no, let me not say ask. How many of us here are waiting on the Lord concerning an issue? Raise up your hand. I know only few, but uh, do you know that there is a way in your own energy after three months, you may still be going and say, ah, God will do it. My God will supply all your needs. Okay. Six months. One year. Two years. Worship song will begin to reduce. It will move from 200 general songs to two. Two years. Three years. Five years. Seven years. Your ability to wait is a product of what you are eating on the inside. If you eat the word, even if it takes 15 years, you will say, I will wait until my change comes. I will trust in the word of the Lord. Even when it does not look like it. Listen, even when God does not look like it's working, God is working. God does not need to leave his throne to change things. But you must partner with him so that what he has changed in the realm of the spirit, it will manifest in the realm of the physical. If you are with me, say, I hear you. Thank you, sir. Our daddies are with me. If you are with me, say, I hear you. The word of God is the champion's diet. You cannot continually give yourself to the ministry of the word. Now, I'm talking about Bible study. I'm talking about Sunday sermons. I'm talking about sermons even after the message that's, you know, been done. You listen to it again. Why? Jeremiah said that words were found and I did eat them. And they were to be a joy and a rejoicing. Meaning, listen, you cannot be more joyful than your word base. Hello, sir. You cannot be more joyful than your word base. I see a lot of Christians. Hey! More for fire after the singing, more for fire, they go back home down that step. And then you ask them, I thought you went to the house of the Lord. It's because when they went, they only went for the euphoria and the entertainment, they, they were not ministered to. But you see, when you have a rock solid foundation in the world, <laughs> even when everything looks as though it has failed, you know your God and you know that it will show up. What out of failure? Our God is alive, and then you can begin to post scriptures that although my beginning may be small my later end will greatly increase 
Our Lord God is a sun and a shield. He will give grace and glory. Nothing good will live without from them that walk uprightly. You see, people of the world are already responding. My light is as my path is as the shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my high tower, is my shield and my buckler. When my enemies and foes come to attack me, he said they stumbled and fell. It's not they are not about to stumble, they stumbled and fell because in Luke 19. Jesus said to the disciples, He said, I beheld Satan fall as lightning from heaven. I'm saying that the world makes me a champion. Any day, any time, the world will work. In Amata, the world works. In hot season, the world works. In the middle of the night, the world works. Among witchcraft, the world works. He has made you victorious over principalities, powers, might, thrones, dominion. Every name that is named in this world. Somebody say in this world. Tell your neighbor, I will win in this world and I will win in eternity. If you believe it, stand up and shout the Lord, Amen. Amen. All right. I think the spirit of Bishop is about to enter me now. Glory be to God. Let's run a little. So, the ministry of the word, for example, in John chapter 6 and verse 63, Jesus says, The word, it is the spirit that quickened it. The flesh, it profited nothing. Brothers and sisters, there are things you have tried to do in the realm of the flesh. You have tried to borrow money. Money did not come. Can you go to the God who spoke to Elijah and said, You will not see wind? You will not see rain, but the valley will be filled with water. How it will be done is not your business. What must be done is what you should find out. Because when God says it, it must be done. Just worship it for one minute. Oh, Please sit down. Please sit down. May God show Himself strong in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Second aspect of spiritual preparation. So, as you eat the word, Joshua 1 a, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. Listen, if the enemy can make you not talk the word, he's already defeating you. If the enemy can make you continue to talk about your circumstance, is this problem that does not go? Uh, is this uh, 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 uh. anything can change when God is introduced? <laughs> anything can change. Ah, anything can change. I was sharing with our brethren in church on Sunday that listen, even doctors' reports can be doctored by God. God looks at the verdict of the doctor and then decides that if you can believe a superior result. A superior report because it is God that marks the report of the doctors. Are you here? That whatever has been said concerning you is not the final until God has spoken, the journey continues. Hallelujah. Second aspect of the spiritual operations is prayer. Prayer. I will pray, I will pray, I will pray, oh, I will pray. If I don't, Satan will make men from me. You know, James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. The man of God began to make us realize that there is something about prayer that must return to the church. And that is faith and faith and importunity. Faith and importunity. Because a doubtful man is unstable in all his ways. And he should not expect that he will receive anything from God. But you see, Elijah was a man of like passions like you and me. But he gave himself to the discipline of prayer. And after a while, we see that Elijah's prayer request became an answer and a model. I want to pray for somebody here. May your prayer point become answers. May they not only become answers, may they encourage others too. You must give yourself to prayer. Even when it does not look as though it's working. If you keep praying, truly, it will change. 
When you are charging your phone, you don't plug it and say it's already full automatically. It takes a while. Now, it is not that it's taking God time. No, it's that we are building capacity for things to come. Listen, answer to prayer can be a test for the next level. Abraham prayed to God. God gave him a child after waiting 25 years. Then God said, give me the boy again. Why? It was a test for the next level. God was not planning to just give Isaac. He was planning to make Abraham father of many nations. So I'm saying that what you carry on your inside and your prayer point is only an introduction to what God wants to show to you. For eyes have not seen, nor ears have. And we are people of faith here. Neither has it entered. I'm saying that your biggest dream is simply to compare to what God wants to show you. May God open your eyes. Who said that your circumstances can be your final limitation? It depends on what you choose. You can be in a corner in Ibadan and God can declare that you will be global. And you know what? When God puts his hand on your life, the race, you move faster. God can give you speed when your direction is intact. Can I pray for somebody? May God give you speed. In the right direction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let's make progress. Now to that prayer, please add fasting to your prayer. At intervals, Matthew 26, 41. There are some times that we not go out. Except by prayer and fasting. There are Christians who don't pray at all. There are Christians who pray once in a while. There are Christians who pray a bit. And there are Christians who don't only pray, but they add some fasting. What fasting does is that he humbles the soul before God. He allows you to pay attention to the things that matter. You can't be fasting at your face to say, brethren, it's almost two o'clock. Follow on, let two days they do. And you are watching Netflix, you are not fasting. When you are really fasting, you is self-denial for a higher purpose. And when you give yourself to that consistently, your light will break forth as the morning. Hallelujah. Number two aspect. So number one, we have spoken about spiritual preparation. Somebody say spiritual preparation. Permit me to move swiftly because I like to get to time. Say with me, spiritual preparation. Number two aspect of preparation for the race that I want us to consider very briefly is mental preparation. Mental preparation. Hi. God is able to do just what he says he will do. Oh, he's gonna fulfill every promise to me. I won't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Cause he won't give up. He's now hear this. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 2, and let me explain mental preparation. That some things are the will of God for our lives in the race of destiny does not mean that we will experience it. I hope you know there are Christians that have died without accomplishing what God desired for them. Why? Listen, if your spirit can receive it and your mind rejects it, it will not manifest it. Let me give an example. Let's say this is a trillion dollars. It can't be a trillion. I can't be using a trillion to claim. Thank you, sir. My mind can receive this one, so they brought it. One day, that's how they bring one billion to me. Someone say amen for me. My mind, I'll, I'll, by then, I'll be able to receive it. Now, look at this. There are certain things we think we have outgrown, whereas it's not true. There are people today that if they have 30 million naira, for example, on, in their bank account, after a while, their bank account must reduce to the level of their mindset. Do you know that, I don't know if it has happened to you before, but our elders may know this, that if somebody gives you money that has never entered your account, and you were not ready mentally to handle it, do you know you will waste that money until it reaches the level of the one you can handle? I'm saying that the reason God does not answer some prayers is not because he's not a good father. It's that he is so good that if he answers it now, it can destroy us. Because sometimes we want things, but you see, we will really want what we want when we get it. There are things that God wants to introduce, but our mind cannot handle it. Let me give you an example. In the book of Numbers, the children of Israel were sent to go and spy the land of Canaan. And God had promised that I will give you this land. When they got there, they said, sir, we are as grasshopper before them and because of their utterance all of them perished and only joshua and caleb that had an understanding of the transformation of the mind 
They were the ones that were able to enter. Listen, God is always preparing you and I for what he has prepared for us. But whether we will be able to enter and assess it is a product of mental preparation. Let me give you an example of mental preparation. Uh, Theophilus, please come. Now, a simple question I want to ask you. Are you ready? Can you stand from here now and you will be able to jump from here to outside? From here. Just take off like that. It's not possible. Why? You have not tried it before. Or you don't have the capacity. Now, what if you run? If you try. But you, and you will get outside. If you jump from here. The reason is, it's not that it's not possible. Listen, it's not that some things are not possible. But they are not possible under certain conditions. There is a law. There is a law at work on earth. But there is another law. Oh my God. But there is another law at work in space. Yes, the law of gravity will limit him on earth. But you know if he's in space, don't be careful. Don't be sorry. You will just find out that you walk all over my baby. I want to come down. Now, gravity does not work in space. I want to bring a revelation to you. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made you free from the law of sin and death. That means the way to abolish one law is to introduce another. So in your destiny, mm, are you ready? When it comes to mental preparation, once you begin to hear what God has said, He, he will make you the head and not the tail. He will cause His face to shine upon you. He will strengthen you with mind by the spirit in the inner man. All those your retreats, hearing of the word, declaration by the man of God. After a while, your mind begins to agree that He means it's possible. Now, once your mind allows it to be possible, that which is already locked up in the bank in the realm of the spirit, suddenly it will find expression, sometimes without too much exertion. Why? Your mind has allowed what God has declared. Pray. Please go back. Are you blessed? Romans chapter 12, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Somebody say transform. Somebody say transform. Okay, if you want to be transformed, say transform. By the renewing of your mind. That means if the goal of God for your business is to be global and you are in a kiosk. As you begin to read the scripture, the Bible begins to tell you, no, your beginning may be small. No worry. Your later end. As you begin to look, behold that perfect law of liberty, something begins to happen to your spirit and then your mind. Because your spirit first catches it before your mind catches up. Your spirit first catches it before your mind catches up. And so as you begin to renew your mind, one day you will just believe it and then you will start asking questions like, okay, can I get a better space? You never thought that better space existed in Lebanon until you began to see scripture. That's why the answer of God to our problems has been given in his word. He said he sent his word, the word, heal them and deliver them. So deliverance is not falling down and breaking chair, it's the release of the mind. Because we can fall down and break the chairs and then nothing has saved. Not that God did not move, but we, we did not move. Are we blessed? Renewing of the mind. Say with me, I believe what God has said. I believe it. <laughs> I believe it. One of God's greatest gifts to mankind is the soul and the mind. I'm, I'm very quick with this. Now, let me tell you three things that can help our mind transformation, mental transformation. Number one, exposure. Exposure. <laughs> Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Anomi soro, umariwo, uni mi soro, uti badu shibo, ola mi asoro, awa mari, ichile ni no ichile. So number one is exposure. Exposure. A young girl comes from the village to be an housemaid, and one boyfriend in the second street. Now takes her to, I don't know the eatery they have here, Ventura. Is it Ventura? I don't know. There's one. Tell me that one. There's a new eatery in Ibadan. Who knows? Okay. Mommy, which one? Magadi. Kilimanjaro. Come. 
<laughs> now, she sits down in Kilimanjaro and is giving a plate of fried rice, a protein oil, Jenny. Fried rice with chicken that they only eat once in the year, 31st, SAD, SAD, yellow mouth. Some of us were victims. Some of you know that it was leg they gave you until you grew up. I said, one day, I think we know in the that. Do you know that exposure to poverty can make you begin to accommodate poverty? Exposure to sickness consistently can make you feel, oh, there were women, no, and more alone, no, no. No, but she was alone, no, she is your life. You must reject what God has rejected for that rejection to be activated. Let me say that again. You must reject what God has rejected for that rejection to be activated. Are we together to that? Mental transformation. And then you begin to read books, or you travel out, or you go somewhere, and then your mind is open. You say, ah, no, le, le. And then the girl gets back to the village, December. And they say, oh, yeah, 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 sit down with your brethren. Then one for less, and they should say, uh, 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 uh. why? In my mind, I am in Kilimanjaro. This place you are putting me is too small for me. And guess what? The mind, like somebody has said, once stretched, will never return to its original size. When we were young, we used to play rubber. There's something they call babala. Do you know babala? Hey, what babala? Wow, ah, ah, babala. Okay. Hey, do you know babala? When you throw it inside kerosene, the rubber will expand. Then when you throw it, oh my god, go away. But rubber will later go back. Why? Kerosene will dry up. But when the word of God enters you, it does not disappear. It remains like that. So you can only go from glory to glory, not from shape to shape. Are we together here? The mind. Only God knows what God has presented for you have rejected because your mental capacity seems, it looks like, you know, when I was growing up, that there was a time I didn't believe that a, a, a man should have more than three shoes. I said, if you have more than three shoes, go and waste You read better now in three shoes. You know, people don't know. When I was in the university, one time I bought a, a suit of 2K, suit. Suit, that's you know, coat, suit of 2K, 2K, okay. complete, longevity, 2K. But you know what? That there is a realm where you can actually have resources that can only afford you that level of life, and you are not faking it. But because your mind is seen beyond where you are, it is impossible for life to keep you there. God will always listen, it's investment, it's called return on investment, ROI. You cannot continually invest in your mental growth and you will remain small. It's impossible. Even if your area is small, they will come and take you away and take you to where you belong. Can you tell yourself, I don't belong here. I belong somewhere greater. If that's your, if that's your truth, say amen. Can I run a little more? Take another thing so that I can, I can just wrap up. If you are blessed, shout hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians, you know, so I said exposure, exposure. Some of you, you, some some people say they are battling with lust, but the wallpaper in the room is a man sleeping with a dead, with Abu, Adam Abu here, and they say that is a serpent. It's not serpent to tear that picture first, because what the eyes continually see, the life must reproduce. You cannot. Do you know if you start staying around sick people and you are smelling paracetamol and chloroquine, you can start feeling sick. In fact, the people tell you, ah, hey, look, I've been sure, well, okay, too much. After a while, you say, oh, tell me. Is it true? Why? Exposure. God wanted to change Abraham's life. And God said, Abraham, let's take a walk. Can you count the stars? We don't know whether Abraham had been looking up before, but God said, today, count the stars. And Abraham must have attempted and said, ah, okay, quadratic equation, not really matter. I cannot count it. God said, exactly. The mind said that I cannot count it, but you know their number. It's what God needs. Gideon was stretching weight in the white press for the fear of the media and the chapter 6. And God said, the angel of the Lord came and said, ah, Gideon, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Exposure to something else. And Gideon said, me, if this is true, why have you not seen miracles? The angel said, you don't understand. Go in this your might. The might was always there, but the courage was not there. Some things you have can take you to the nations. But even you don't believe in what God has given you. Listen, God believes in you more than you. Say with me, what God has given me is enough. Yeah, it's enough. Take another one. So exposure, exposure. Number two. Number two, flexibility. Flexibility for the mind. What do I mean by flexibility? When you are exposed to the right things, you cannot continue to now go back and say, no, this is how we must do it. This is how we used to do it. Then you will quote ancient landmarks. 
Ancient landmarks sometimes have been quoted out of context. For example, you're a young man, you want to marry, and you say, we must see whether the girl can get pregnant before we marry her. And don't remove the ancient landmark. That, you see, that's your tribal sentiment. It's not what scripture teaches. So what do you do? Leave that ancient landmark and go to the one that the ancient of days himself did. Because if you enter fornication in the name of testing for baby, the girl can be pregnant before marriage. And when you marry, the baby will, you will have miscarriage. And then you will find out that she will not be pregnant again. Why? There is a God that sits in heaven. And he does whatever pleases him. Don't test God. Amen. Amen. No? Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 5. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God. So the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. That's it. Imaginations. Image. Image. Thinking. What you see, what you hear. Some of us, the songs we hear is a fire extinguisher. We come for fire today, but as we are going on, one song is already saying fire extinguisher. Say, I like it. Increase the volume. Sometimes you notice that what we see on TikTok or some of this app is nudity, immorality, and we like it. But a person that is running kingdom race must learn to look away from it. Why? Because there is a greater future that you cannot use today to destroy. Mental transformation. Let's go. Let's take another thing. Because of time. Number two. Let's go to number two. So number one, preparation to run. Number two, running the race. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. I'll be very fast. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. He says that we are surrounded about with a great cloud of witnesses. And then he says that there is a race that is set before us. He says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, so the reason why we will endure today is because there is a joy that is set before us. Today may be tough, but tomorrow is going to be better. Why? Because we have Christ. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in your family, the hope of glory. Christ in your career, the hope of glory. Christ in your ministry, the hope of glory. Christ in your children, the hope of glory. Christ in your business, the hope of glory. Looking unto Jesus, not unto the economy. Because listen, whether Nigeria economy gets better or not, we cannot fully say. But one thing we are sure about, things may get tougher, but the Christian must get stronger. I don't think things really will get easier. Because even when prices go up and it comes down, they don't bring it down. They will tell you, ah, oh, she won. But when you get stronger, that what one million could do before, now one million looks like 300,000 naira. <laughs> you could not buy block before. But now you are buying blood. It's not the economy that changed. You have tapped into a superior source that never runs dry. If God supplies everybody here what we need 10 times, the economy of heaven will not change at all. Why? God has immeasurably more. He says God is able to do a thing abundantly above what we ask for faith according to his power that works in us. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 to 6. There is a race that is set before us. So we must learn to strip off excess baggage and weight. Because it is possible to have sight, yet lack vision. Sight focuses on the immediate. Vision considers possibilities. Where we are standing to have this program today is Amphani Church, our church. Where we were, some of you may not know me, the first place I preached where I, when I married was this church. But not here, it was in that place. Now, that only God knows how many years this land has been here. In fact, land is always there before we were born. But when God opens eyes and supplies resources, then you take possession. That means, listen, everybody here, hear me, as free by the anointing of the Spirit. Maybe you are ready for it. Your land is waiting since. Your land is waiting. Your house is waiting to be completed. I say it's waiting. Abandoned projects will be completed by the grace of God. Next year will be a year of dedications. Dedications. I need people that believe here. Yeah, dedications. Child dedications, heart dedications, house dedications, business empire dedications. If you believe it, shout it out, amen. Oh, oh, Luambe, Luria, Emil, Ilonche, oh, baby, oh, 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 baby, Sadi, oh, oh, Luambe, Luria, Emil, Ilonche, oh, baby. So, in running the race, one thing we must pay attention to is focus. 
Don't let anything distract your focus. That is, some people attend church, and because a member in the church has offended them, they will walk away from church. Listen, you did not come to serve them. You did not even come to serve the pastor. You came to serve God. And so if God has planted you there, that's your place of flourishing. He says, they that be planted in the house of God shall flourish in the court of our God. You cannot flourish if you are not planted. If you are visiting, you may not flourish. But if you are planted, you will flourish. Maybe that's a word for somebody. Stay where God has put you. Running around will not bring you where you are going. Nobody runs a race by running around. You must run hard. Focus! And then that's how you get ahead. Are you blessed or not? So running the race. Sight. Vision. Focus. Finishing the race. Let's take the third one so that we can pray. Are we blessed already? I'm sorry I'm cutting it short in righteousness. Blessed are those that keep to time. For reverence shall invite them another time. That's that is Psalm Psalm 200. <laughs> Alright, finishing the race. Finishing the race. Now, everybody alive on the face of the earth today he has not yet fully finished the race. Finishing the race is actually in two levels. Number one, completing your purpose on earth. Then number two, breathing your last. Paul said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have, you know, I have received, I have finished the race. And then there lies ahead of me a crown. I'm here to tell you tonight, you are not called to just start the race. You are called to finish there are a lot of Christians that are start as they are not finished. If you cannot finish something after a while, you will have a lot of things in your life that are abandoned projects. God wants you to be a finisher. And listen, you finish by the grace of God, you finish by discipline, you finish by the anointing. I want to pray for somebody to now. May the anointing of a finisher rest upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8. Finish. Colossians chapter 4, verse 17. Finish it. Life, they say, is a marathon, not a sprint. Stephara, you know, in his book, Finishing Strong, Brown Clifford, John Templeton, and Billy Graham, they were the three mighty evangelists in their days. Parking stadiums. But after a while, thank you, sir. After a while, the, um, the book said, okay, daddy, thank you, sir. And after a while, it was clear that although two of them were very loud and popular, they did not have character. They did not have integrity. Listen, you can start by the anointing. You finish by character. Some of us young people, with the, with the advent of social media, we, we are not strong men. We are not strong women. We can talk to anybody. We can do whatever we like. Rather than learn online, we use online opportunities to destroy ourselves. Why? No wisdom. The presence of data does not always equal the presence of wisdom. Wisdom must be searched out. It doesn't come in an art. You must search it out. Strip off the excess baggage. Life is a marathon, not a race. Run with eternity in view. The temporal will fade away. And what God wants in the end of our race is to is well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what God wants. So we must not compromise because we seek men's approval. What God says about us is enough. Let's stay with the referee. Let's stay with the judge. He will judge our motives. He will judge our words. He will judge our actions. And in the end of our race, I pray, that the testimony will be well done. Thou good and faithful servant, enter ye into the joy of thy Lord. Can you stand up and say loud, Amen? Amen. Are you blessed tonight? When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and time shall be known, and the morning breaks eternal, bright and fair, when the saints of heaven gather over all the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the room is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Take this prayer point before we sit down. Just take this prayer point. Say with me, Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive grace. To run according to your principles and to finish strong. Go ahead and pray. Trem, let's pray. Father, we receive grace. To run according to your principles and to finish strong. To run according to your principles and to finish strong. To run according to your principles, oh God, and to finish strong. To finish strong with our name intact, not soil, not soil. To finish strong with a legacy for generations even to come. Even the youth shall be weary and not having faith. 
For they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall gather momentum like eagles. They shall walk and not fail. They shall run and not be weary. The race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Nor bread to wise, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill. But time and chance happen unto them all. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let me pray this prayer for us. I pray by the mercy of God as we run the race of life. Let time and chance work for your favor. Hey, let time and chance work for your favor. In the name of Jesus. Maybe there is somebody here who needs to rededicate his life to Christ or to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. I just pray with you very quickly wherever you are. You can put your hand on your chest and say, Heavenly Father, I believe Jesus came to this world, died for my sins on the cross, was buried and rose again on the third day. I repent from a life of sin and I receive Christ into my life as my personal Lord and my Savior. I receive the Holy Spirit who will guide me to truth and I receive grace to walk in the word and the will of God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Yeah. All right, while we are standing so that we don't take time, Daddy has asked me to play the role of a man of God by taking the offering. Dip your hands into your pocket or your bags or your phones and give God an offering that is that is befitting, a befitting offering unto the Lord. A befitting offering unto the Lord.